Guy Fox. <laughs>13,000 houses went up in smoke. 90 churches and 44 livery companies were burnt to a crisp. Plus, the fire destroyed the Royal Exchange and St Paul's Cathedral. Hold on, that's not St Paul's Cathedral. It's the old St Paul's. You're thinking of the new St Paul's Cathedral, which was built after the Great Fire. The Lord Mayor did not know what to do. What can I do? People were running for their lives, taking what they could carry and getting out of the city. Finally, King Charles II sent the Duke of York with the army and they exploded buildings to stop the fire from spreading. city was a ruin. Almost all the buildings were destroyed or damaged. You could see clear across the city from wall to wall. Despite the destruction, by September 6th, the city was back at work and Parliament resolved to rebuild it bigger and better than before. In 1667, Parliament passed an act for the rebuilding of the city of London. The act required better construction methods and the use of stone instead of wood, and it included a provision to create a memorial of the Great Fire of London. And this is what they built: the monument. It's 61 and a half meters tall. That's 202 feet. On the top is a bronze vase that represents the Great Fire. This tells the story of the rebuilding of London. It was sculpted by Caius Gabriel Cibber. Each character symbolizes something. This lady is the City of London, laid low by the Great Fire. This beehive is industry, which will help rebuild the city. This fellow is time, helping the city back up. Here is science, and she's carrying a statue of nature, ready to help. And this is architecture, and this is liberty. Behind them are justice and fortitude. Above it all are plenty and peace. And this fellow. Down in the hole here is envy. Keep envy in a hole. 
is what the artist is suggesting, I think. And there are also some real people. That's the Duke of York, who helped put out the fire. And King Charles II. He's offering protection to the city. In the background, you can see Londoners raising their hands to cheer the city on, and the fire, and the rebuilding of the city. I've got to show you something. This is Pudding Lane. This is where the fire started. And if you measure from here to the monument, it is exactly 202 feet. So, if you lay the monument on its side, its top would touch Pudding Lane. Yeah, that's right, but can we go in now? steps, each one six inches high, or 15 centimetres tall. One, two, three, four, five, It took six years six, to build, mainly because seven, eight, Portland stone was hard to come by. 46, 47, 48. Christopher Wren was in charge of rebuilding. He made sure that the monument 216, 217, 218. Most people think that Christopher Wren designs the monument, but in fact it was Robert Hooke. He was a scientist and architect and helped rebuild London. I'll let you in on a secret. Robert Hooke designs the monument to be a zenith telescope. He wanted to lie under the monument and look up at the stars to make his measurements. Wowee! What happened? Did it work out? Did he get his measurements? Unfortunately, no. The vibrations of traffic ruined it. Instead, it has become a tourist attraction with amazing views. What do you see from up there? There's the new St. Paul's Cathedral. There's St. Morton and the London Eye. There's the Gherkin and Lloyds of London. Look at all those cranes. In the city there's always construction. Would you like to see how this view compares to 150 years ago? Sure, sure. let's see it. visit the monument, make sure you pick up a copy of the Guy Fox Souvenir Guide. <laughs>